Hi, George here again. And what I'd like to talk to you about in this video is the concept of respiratory rate and total cycle time. So as you can see on the board behind me, respiratory rate is abbreviated RR and total cycle time is TCT. And total cycle time is essentially just the time that it takes for one complete ventilatory cycle to occur. So when we're talking about a ventilatory cycle, we're talking about the entire time of inspiration and the entire time of exhalation combined together. So you kind of say that it's from the beginning of inspiration all the way to the end of exhalation. All right, the time that it takes for one complete ventilatory cycle to occur. So I want to show you on the table again. The same concept using this table and the tape and the, the uh, pinkies, these pink things here. So the tape represents one minute in duration. So we can see in this particular example, the patient took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten breaths in one minute. Okay? So within the minute, ten breaths, each breath had to have a certain amount of total cycle time that was devoted for inspiration as well as exhalation. So on my piece of tape right here, I've got, this is the start of the breath right over here, and before the next breath begins, one complete ventilatory cycle. So one total cycle time. Now what happens, or what's the relationship with total cycle time and respiratory rate? What we can basically deduce from this is that if the patient starts taking more breaths in a minute, what ends up happening to this total cycle time is that it starts to shrink. So we start adding some breaths in here, just randomly place some breaths. We can kind of see then that the total cycle time tends to get smaller. The amount of time between breaths is smaller. On the other hand, the same thing is true if the patient's respiratory rate decreases. So if there's less breaths taken in one minute, the total cycle time then has to increase. Right? And that's kind of the relationship that I want you to get. Increases in respiratory rate result in a drop in the patient's total cycle time. Okay? So they get smaller. The opposite is true as well. So if the patient's respiratory rate goes down or reduces, then the time, uh, the total cycle time would then increase in size, more time between breaths. So let's look at this relationship on the board. So, total cycle time and respiratory rate. If the respiratory rate goes up, more breaths in one minute, the total cycle time is going to decrease. So if we could say if the patient's respiratory rate was 12, and then it changed to 15, so it increased to 15, the total cycle time originally might have been five seconds, that new total cycle time now has decreased to four seconds. Okay. So as respiratory rate increases, total cycle time decreases. It's an inverse relationship here. On the other hand, if the patient's respiratory rate drops, total cycle time has to then increase. So if you have a patient who has a respiratory rate equal to 20 per minute and now the new respiratory rate is equal to 12 per minute the total cycle time for a respiratory rate of 20 per minute is 3 seconds the respiratory rate of 12 results in a total cycle time of 5 seconds you can see the total cycle time then increases as the respiratory rate drops. And that's important to remember when you're dealing with your patient that's spontaneously breathing or if your patient happens to be on a ventilator. Okay, so the relationship here with total cycle time and respiratory rate. Now if you want to see what the formula is for this total cycle time, total cycle time is simply, and I should have probably done this before, but total cycle time is simply 60, since there's 60 seconds, in one minute divided by the respiratory rate. So again, if you happen to have 
a respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute, the total cycle time would be 60 divided by, by 10. Total cycle time would be uh, 6 seconds. Okay, And that's how you calculate it out. Now you can also use that formula to figure out what the patient's respiratory rate if you, is if you happen to only have total cycle time. So that formula is respiratory rate is equal to 60 divided by the total cycle time. So if you had a total cycle time of, let's say for example, 4 seconds, 60 divided by 4 is 15. The patient's respiratory rate is 15 breaths per minute. This has been another video illustrating the ventilation dynamics and the understanding of total cycle time and respiratory rate with respect to those ventilation dynamics. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you like this stuff, please let me know. And uh, also, subscribe if you get a chance to. Please subscribe to my channel if you get a chance to. And of course, I welcome any negative comments too, but just let me know how I can improve it. Hope you have a great day. This is George O.